we did not grow up doing local beef. And basically, as far as the whole process goes, is that one of the things you need to know is that when you're doing local beef, um, it happens when they have the butcher scheduled. And so you don't just all of a sudden decide, hey, I would like some beef. Can I get some next week? Most of the time. I mean, you'll have to talk to your farmer. Sometimes, they, depending how frequently they have their butchering, they might have some beef on hand. But you just know that you might have to work within certain butchering dates and uh, plan ahead that it might not be readily available like you would at the grocery store, just walk in and pick it up. You might have to plan ahead for the butchering dates. The second is, is that once your cow is butchered, in our area anyways, um, often they hang for a couple weeks. So you get your butchering date, but then it's two weeks after when you actually get your cow and your beef. Um, and so that's just something to know. It's not like, oh, butchering, we're getting it the next day either. There's still a wait time on that. What it ends up looking like is we let the farmer know that we're interested in a cow. And then he puts, uh, he makes sure he has that, um, put aside, save for us. And then the butchering happens at the end of the year. And then right before the butchering or right during the butchering, we get a list and we fill out what types of cuts we want. And then you pick and choose what you want in roast, what you want in steaks. If you want any specialty things, then you can add that in there. And then the butcher does that all up and then you get it when um, in a couple weeks. Okay, so the other thing I just want to mention is that um, this whole idea of hanging weight versus finished weight. These are two terms that are thrown around and we didn't understand them at first. Basically the hanging weight is the um, the weight of the animal when it is butchered and it is the, the weight that you're charged on. Finished weight is the weight you actually take home. And so what that means is that you want to kind of add between 30 to potentially 50, that's a bit extreme, but to your actual hanging weight price because they will say it's a certain amount per hanging weight but you want to add 30 percent to 50 percent on your um uh, on top of that and that's what you'll be paying for your finished weight that you take home and put in your freezer and, and so that's just one of those things that i think is just good to know beforehand so that when you go into it you don't feel like you were ripped off because you ended up paying more than what you thought you were paying that is common practice on how it works. If you've had a different experience or something else that you've learned in the process that I forgot to mention here, just comment below, let uh, everyone else know kind of what your experience has been. That'd be super helpful. So if you want to know how much a half a beef costs, we'll talk about that uh, at the end of the video. But for now, what we're going to do is we're going to go through, and we're going to talk about how much we got, what it weighed, uh, how do you fit it in your deep freeze, all of that. So let's get to it. So we just got our half a beef in. This is the third year that we have done beef. Um, from a local farmer and we have loved it. Um, but we wanted to weigh it, unbox it for you all so that you can see, because I know if you've never done it before, you might be wondering how much even is that? How much space does it take up in your freezer? So first off, for our half a beef, we have uh, one, two, three, four, five boxes. These boxes are, I believe about 20 inches-ish by about 14 and then they're about like six and a half deep. So that's what we got for half a beef. We are going to, first off, I want to weigh it. So don't cut it yet, buddy. We're going to weigh this one. Let's see. It's a little bit of an unboxing. Right okay, right here. This is not the job for me. I mean, that's that's nice because that means you got lots of weight, right? But I got to turn it because I can't even see the number. Okay, so this one is 44 pounds. So my, yeah, move this over here. All right, buddy, we got this one weighed, so don't cut it yet. Mommy's gonna weigh this one. This one's not quite, <laughs> this one's not quite as heavy. Okay, 34.2. Okay, here we come. Box number three. <laughs> Okay, this is not cool. Not yet, buddy. Just wait. Patience. 33.8. Let's just make sure. I stuck it in it. 33.8. Yeah. 34. 49.8. Okay, so we got 187.4 pounds total of meat. Now it's time to open up. Okay, you can open up. Let's see what we got. Very nice. 
very careful. It's a tough one. Can you do it? It's, you need lots of muscles. Good job. Okay, good. Good job. So it looks like we got some roast in here and some steaks in here. Okay, and I think this is our hamburger. Ooh, look at all that hamburger. Okay. Let's see what you can one. Oh, more hamburger. That's why those were so heavy, both the hamburger ones were heavy. Okay, let's see what's in this one. We got more steak in here, all of our New York steaks. And then we got, we had some beef sausage in here, breakfast sausage, because it is delicious. <laughs> so there we go. Roughly we have close to 100 pounds of hamburger and then we have close to 100 pounds of uh, steak and roast and sausage. Um, so it's pretty much split 50-50 split I think. So when I'm organizing all this in my freezer, what I really like to do is I like to kind of do um, everything in kind of um, stacks. So I have like all my hamburger, I have all my roast, I have all my steaks, and I kind of like to try to um, stack it up in a column so that I can keep track of what's in there. And um, it, ma it just makes it a lot easier. Yeah, we still have a box of stuff left over. Like, I feel like when we did half a beef, I was like, oh, we're not really gonna worry about this too much. We're gonna go through it. Uh, we'll have it a lot more. I feel like I was splurging a lot more and I still didn't get through half fully and we were trying to eat it more as we knew that we were getting another beef coming in and I still have this whole box from last year. So I'll pull it up. Yeah. When I am doing it, I like to stack all my hamburger here and then I'll have my roast here and I'll put my steaks here, my breakfast sausage here. And then um, I kind of like to have all of our fruit and stuff for smoothies and anything like that over here. And then our, we have this, that tends to be more like veggies and orange juice and stuff. Um, if there's space, then I try to keep the veggies under the basket here. So we'll see, we'll see how much this fills up. We got chicken. I am not a fan for like buying a lot of just miscellaneous stuff for your freezer. Like honestly, it is meat, veggies, and fruit. That is pretty much all I keep in it all the time. And so it is so easy to keep track of. And I find we don't really throw out much. Um, so it's, it's really um, <laughs> mentally freeing when you know what's in your freezer, I feel like. what was left from last year. <laughs> okay, so maybe you just wanna show in here, Dallas. This is where I wanna start with my beef, minus this bean here and that bean here. This is where I'm gonna start with my beef so that it can be organized because I know it's the most recent stuff, so it's gonna be at the bottom. I'm gonna count this out and I'm gonna see what we have of everything so you can know kind of total. Now I did get, um, a list from the farmer beforehand where I could go through and kind of pick some of the cuts that I wanted and um, like if I wanted some of it made into roast or steak or those kind of things and so you do get some options and we chose to make some breakfast sausage. Um, yeah, um, I didn't make any extra hamburger than what came with it just because I find why would you do more of the cheap stuff if you could have steak instead but that's, that's a personal preference. Hey you. So first I'm going to count out the hamburger and see how much we have and put it into the freezer so Let's get going. One, two, three. I really do feel like that worked better last time. Try to remember exactly what I did, but I just, I'm gonna need to build it up all at the same time because it is definitely not gonna stack otherwise. Why are they one pound? I just, um, so I chose to put them in one pound just cause I wanted the smallest size that wasn't gonna cost extra. And um, it's just a little bit better for our family. Her meal. There's three layers in here, not two. Okay, we got 14. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14. Looks like 14 in every layer. Let's just make sure. I have a little bit of a change of plan. I've been putting the hamburger in and it's just sliding to cover the bottom. So we need to put a little bit of some roast and steak, start putting those in so that it doesn't just go everywhere. <laughs> so we're gonna come up our hamburger and then we'll figure that out. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen. Okay, so we got three rows of fourteen. So that's three, eight, forty-two. Three, eight, forty-two. So forty-two in this box. 
Let's write that down. I don't do this every time. I'm just doing this for the video to show you guys. I mean, it really actually makes sense that there is about 48, there's not about, that there's 48 of these in the box because they're each one pound and that's about what the box weighs. So, I mean, I should have guessed. Just basically divided the amount by three. Okay, so I'm just gonna do it this way. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, 40, 41, 42, 43, 44, 45, 46, 47 in that one. So in total, we have 89 one pound packs of hamburger. Okay, let's try to check and see what we got for our roasts in here. So we've got chuck roast, cross rib roast, eye of round roast. Let's put this right here. We've got uh, another chuck roast, so that's two chuck roasts. Three chuck roasts. We have got. Okay, it looks like the rest of this is all steak. Okay, so there's five roasts in those. Three chuck, one cross rib, one eye of round. Let's put that in. So we got another rump roast. We've got a uh, nut rump roast, and this one is a rump roast. <laughs> And those are all steaks. So that means we've got eight roasts all together. So now I'm going to put some steaks in here just to help keep the hamburger so it doesn't just everywhere. Ribeye steaks, one, two, three, four, five. So we've got eight ribeye steaks, and I believe that there's two in each of these. So that would be 16 steaks all together for ribeye. And then we got our tenderloin in here, which is one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Seven packs of tenderloin. And that is our first box in the freezer. So that's what it looks like with one box in there and partial hamburger box in there. So we got three packs of cross rib. Note to self, I am definitely going to be putting in hamburger last next time. Okay. We got our sirloin tip. So we got one, two, three, four, five sirloin tip. Okay, so we just did sirloin tip steak. This is just sirloin steak. We've got one, two, three, seven sirloin. And we have nine New York steaks here. We have our hamburger over here. We've got all of our roasts over here. We've got our sirloin tip in here, we've got, uh, or sorry, we've got our sirloin and our sirloin tip, our New York tenderloin, cross rib and ribeye. So it's all kind of stacked together. I'm gonna start putting some New York just on top of this stuff here. Some uh, bone spur broth, one, two, three, four, five, five packs like this. I'm gonna just start putting in the hamburger as fast as I can. <laughs> packages of sausage here that we're gonna put in here. Okay, so this is most of everything other than our soup bone. So this was completely empty um, up to here when we started. I just need to put in a few packs of soup bones. I have all my steaks here. I packed a few hamburger over top of some steaks. And then I have some hamburger in here and I packed some sausage over top of my roasts. That should be pretty easy to keep track of. And um, I'm just gonna put some of our old stuff now on top so that I can keep track of that and use that first. Okay, fix. Just fix, that's a good packing. Like first time trying, wow, it fits. Okay, so um, we got all of our uh, stuff from last year in here now too, so this is what it's looking like. <laughs> Half from this year, some from last year. Got this basket in here now. Uh, we're gonna have to see if we can fit everything else in. I'm not sure. So I think I'm gonna put um, the bones for soup. I think I'm gonna put those in our fridge freezer just cause those will be easy to access and not cluttering up this space. 
So again, this is this is our fruit, all of our frozen fruit, orange juice. We have some of our veggies in here. I put back in some chicken that we had just because we do like a little bit of variety every once in a while. Okay, put those in there. Okay, so as you can see, the top is less organized than the bottom is, but I still know where everything is in our freezer and it will be a little bit just, I mean, that's always a thing when you have a full freezer at the beginning, it's a little bit just of work to get down to what you want, but it should be pretty easy. And then I got, again, I got my hamburger here. I just have some chicken here. Roasts aren't too bad here. If I lift this up, steaks are really easy to get at. Um, so we should be set. Um, so the only problem is this is all the stuff that I pulled out that doesn't have space. So I'm going to have to find some space for that somewhere else, hopefully in our fridge. Okay, so there's our half a beef. Hope this helps. If you're thinking about getting half a beef, I uh, hope this helps you just kind of get some clarity in terms of what might, you might expect. And uh, everyone, I find we've done a couple different uh, farmers locally and their, their sheets for filling out look a little bit different as far as your variety and your options. So, um, but that's, that's what we got for our half a beef. Okay, so for all this beef, we've got a little under 200 pounds of beef and we ended up spending $1,400 for a total. Now that can feel like a lot if you're paying for that upfront, but if you budget it and you put it into your plan, then um, it really only works out to about $27 a week on your beef. You're getting local, fresh beef, really good quality. And so uh, if you wanna know how to budget, links below, I have some videos on that. But um, yeah, $27 a week is what it actually works out to. You just need to have a little bit of um, planning ahead to be there and save up for it prior to buying it, is all. Thanks for watching. And we'll see you in the next one. Hit the like button, subscribe below. Oh, oh.